Chapter 229 Night Beach Meeting January 2nd You are listening at NovelFull.audio Brother Amelia spoke softly as she walked towards Lucian. She had thought of several ways to start a conversation with him, of several words to say, and even thought of just hugging him. But now that she is near him again, Amelia's feelings became even more chaotic. She doesn't know what to say and is panicking. Amelia is aware that her very thin body is not as attractive as other women's curvy bodies. She has also always been jealous of Sophia, who, despite also having a slim body, has bigger breasts and a more sexy ass than her. But now she couldn't help comparing herself to Angela, who has an incredibly sexy and curvy body. Despite being a mature woman, with her recent arrival at the mortal realm and Lucian's incredible life mana, Angela also has skin as perfect as a young girl without losing the mature charm that Lucian loves so much. As much as Amelia tried to ignore Angela on one side, there is lust on his other side, and of course, Lucian made it clear that he has other wives. Amelia missed when she was only jealous of Sophia. Dot Lucian smiled at Amelia. He understands that it is very difficult for her to deal with the side effects of the bloody rose, and being Envy's partner doesn't see to help anyway. All he wants to do is to care for her, help, and protect Amelia even though their relationship has always been complicated. Lucian couldn't help but think that it was his fault and that he must be the one to try harder to fix their relationship. He opened his arms to Amelia, just like he did two months ago. I missed you, sister. Amelia wanted to complain about so many things, wanted to look strong and relaxed. A part of her even wanted to run away from there to compose herself and calm down before talking to Lucian. But seeing Lucian's strong and warm arms spread just waiting for her, broke all her emotional barriers. Amelia could lie to herself, but her body would always be honest, and so she couldn't help but jump into Lucian's arms and accept his pleasant hug. While she felt Lucian's arms hugging her tightly, Amelia also hugged his waist and enjoyed his wonderful scent. I missed you too. We didn't need to stay away from each other if you had come with me. Amelia tried to speak in an annoyed tone, but she only sounded like a pouting child to Lucian. Lucian gently stroked Amelia's beautiful white hair. You know I couldn't have gone with you. I have responsibilities now and people I must take care to. But. I can help you become stronger. You don't have to do it this way. Amelia spoke as she rubbed her nose on Lucian's chest. She didn't notice how her acts are becoming more and more intimate, already crossing the barrier between siblings that she did not want to cross, or rather, that she thinks she does not want to cross. Lucian has no special sexual attraction for Amelia except for finding her a beautiful girl. Still, he wants to give all the love he has to her, just as he wants to do with Sophia and his other wives. But he also wants to help her become stronger, and for that, he can only use sexual pleasure. Well, he could just hug and caress her, but that would be much less effective than the many other things he can do. There is also the issue of the Bloody Rose's side effects. Lucian can't deny that he feels that he has more control over his feelings after a long and pleasurable love session with his wives. It is evident that just as his demonic energy improves and makes his wives' energies more stable, it also helps him to control the great energy from the bloody rose that is in his body. Lust and her sisters expected that, but in the case of Lucian, his demonic energy blends in perfectly with his incredible life mana making the benefits from it much more incredible than Lust expected it to be. So Lucian has no doubt that the best way to help Amelia is to give her a lot of his love, affection, and of course, a lot of pleasure in every way he can. And for that, Lucian understands that he needs to do everything right. Unlike some of his wives that he had to be very direct with, Amelia is not only his sister, but she is also under the influence of the Bloody Rose, besides being a very complicated person. He cannot be too bold and not too passive, or he could end up scaring her. Lucian started moving his hands and caress from the top to the bottom of Amelia's back while trying to speak as Envy would. Aren't you annoyed about always being the third? He spoke in a seductive and mysterious tone, making Amelia confused for a second. Then Lucian brought his lips close to Amelia's ear. 
I can make you stronger than Eve and Donna. Envy understood what Lucian was doing. She knows about the hierarchy of strength that has made Eve the first of Lucian's sister to get into the chamber of the mountain fortress to be chosen by one of the sins. Lucian and his sister's hierarchy put Eve as the strongest of them, Donna as the second, and Amelia as the third. And that has always caused a little envy in Amelia. The difference between Eve and Amelia is eight years old, so everyone understood that she really must be the strongest of them. Still, Donna is just one year older than Amelia, and so she always tried to beat her but failed in all sparring sessions because of Donna's incredible strength and endurance. If becoming as strong as her mother and getting Lucian's attention are Amelia's two biggest wishes, becoming stronger than Donna and Eve is her third most important wish. So Amelia was obviously tempted by Lucian's offer, but Envy quickly spoke in her mind. You know he's talking about doing perverted things, right? Amelia was upset and shook her head on Lucian's chest, without moving her nose away from his shirt. No. We shouldn't do those things. Lucian kept caressing Amelia's lower back gently as he moved his nose on her hair near her ear. He couldn't deny that Amelia has an amazing fragrance, different from any other woman he knows. He continued using a loving and seductive tone. What things? I'm not talking about sex. Can't you feel it? Right now, just with this hug, my demonic energy is improving your body. How does this compare to Envy's energy? Amelia feels so good in Lucian's arms that she doesn't want to think about anything. But when he talked about his energy, she realized that it is really different from Envy's. While Envy's energy seemed cold and made her feel upset, Lucian's is warm and comfortable. It made her feel protected and loved. Amelia couldn't help wanting to be in Lucian's embrace forever. But how could she say that to him? Would she, his older sister, tell her younger brother to care for her? Amelia's pride and chaotic feelings prevent her from being sincere with herself, and so she was embarrassed and tried to change the talk subject. Um. Do you. Have wings now. Amelia spoke in a low tone. But she still hasn't moved her nose from Lucian's chest or stopped hugging his waist tightly. While Envy was upset about being ignored, Angela and Oya rolled their eyes, watching the scene. And of course, they were a little jealous of Amelia. Lucian realized that Amelia was embarrassed. But he thought it is good because, unlike the last time they met, she seems less resistant to him now. He laughed and slowly spread his wings. What do you think of them? Amelia slowly turned her face aside, without moving it away from Lucian's chest because she is too addicted to his scent to want to miss it for even a few seconds. She saw part of his wings before, and now looking closely, she found its color, texture, and even the thorns very beautiful. In fact, it is impossible for her to find anything about Lucian ugly or even average because he looks perfect in every way. But again, Amelia's pride and embarrassment would not let her praise him. They look cool. She spoke and quickly turned her face to his chest again. Lucian could only laugh at Amelia's reactions. Although she was acting spoiled and making everything more difficult for them, he couldn't deny that there is something cute about one of his older sisters behaving like this in his arms. Oh, I'm still learning to use them, but I think I can do something nice. Lucian started moving his wings forward, wrapping them around Amelia. Although very resistant, his wings have a very comfortable texture, and because his bones are flexible membranes, Amelia did not feel any discomfort when it touched her body. In fact, the place his wings created around her seemed like a cocoon that made her smell his fragrance, feel his warmth even more, and also making her feel even more protected. There, embraced by Lucian's strong arms and wings, Amelia felt that nothing could be better. Her body even compared that to being in her mother's womb, and few things could be better than that. Well, Lucian could make her feel these other things too. But just like anyone else, Perhaps except for saints whose goodness transcends all selfishness, Amelia not only wants to enjoy that sensation but to ensure that she could feel it again many times, or rather, forever. Still, how could Amelia be content with just getting a little bit of Lucian's affection? 
no. She has to be the most important person to him. She is his older sister and has to make him want to hug her like that all the time. And to always be with Lucian, Amelia is sure she has to stand out more than any of his so-called wives and show him that they are weak and not as impressive as she is. Despite being so bad that it even seemed painful, Amelia started to step back from Lucian's body. She must not seem too dependent on him or want his hug that much, otherwise, he will become more and more confident, and so she will not be able to have his full attention. Amelia tried to look away from Lucian, otherwise, she could not help but jump into his embrace again. Coincidentally, she looked in the direction of Angela, who was mounted on top of Oya. Lucian quickly spoke while smiling at Angela. This is Angela, my wife, and Oya, my dear companion. Angela got down from Oya as she smiled and held out her hand to Amelia. Nice to meet you, Amelia. Angela's gentle smile and friendly attitude made Amelia feel bad. Like Lucian and their sisters, she is not used to dealing with other people. But in this case, it is even worse because Amelia is very jealous of Angela, and she preferred that she is not so friendly. But since Angela is so friendly, Amelia also tried her best, because she doesn't want to look childish. She shook Angela's hand. Nice to meet you too. At that moment, Envy materialized her body next to Amelia. Now she has a lot more demonic energy than before and can keep her physical body as much as she wants, but she wanted to show up at a good time. And now is a good time to show up because Envy wants to help Amelia get more and more of Lucian's attention. Mortal Realm's Second Layer This is quite impressive for a person from an inferior world. Have you been fucking like rabbits for 24 hours a day, every day of the week? Envy spoke in a provocative tone while looking at Angela with a hostile expression. Lucian thought about confining Envy's demonic energy again, but Lust quickly spoke in a provocative tone. How many incredible demons have you seen advance from the first layer of the mortal realm to the second in a few weeks? By the way, Angela spends most of the day studying and teaching magic and only meets Lucian at night. Few weeks. Not only Envy, but Amelia also exclaimed. They know how difficult it is to get stronger even with resources, so an ordinary human from an inferior world making a breakthrough that usually takes several months for incredible people in a few weeks is really unbelievable. Lucian mentally praised lust as he stroked Angela's smiling face. My dear Angela is incredible, isn't she? Hashtag 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 if you want to support me in read advanced chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.fi.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 230 Night Beach Meeting, February 2nd, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. A part of Amelia is very jealous of Angela, not precisely because she is getting stronger, but mainly because she is doing it so well with Lucian. But both herself and Envy couldn't help but be impressed by the speed that Angela reached the second layer the mortal realm from the first. Of course, if Lucian wasn't lying, but he has no reason to lie. While Envy wants more and more to have Lucian under her control, Amelia began to think that he can fulfill her desire to become stronger than their sisters faster than Envy can, after all, it is obvious that L.U.S.T's powers are better at helping others while most other sins, like Envy, focus on strengthening only them and their hosts. Amelia is also much more inclined to believe in Lucian, her brother, than Envy, a manipulative demon even though the soul contract prevents them from harming each other. But instead of accepting Lucian's help, Amelia is now more certain than ever that she has to show Lucian that he better focus his attention mainly on her and not on his wives, so he can strengthen her faster, and of course, she would do her best to help him too. Still, the most complicated part for Amelia is making it clear that she wants to cooperate with Lucian. She still isn't sure what exactly she can do with him. Hugs and caresses look very good, but anything more still seems very wrong. 
For Amelia, the best way to proceed still seems to be the competition. So she can show Lucian how he is overestimating his wives and make him keep his promise to let her lead. After hearing about Angela's progress, Envy started asking L.U.S.T questions, while Amelia looked at Angela with a strange expression. Lucian held one of Angela's hands and one of Amelia's hands. I love Angela and my other wives very much, and I hope that you can get along with them, sister. Of course, hubby. Amelia is certainly an amazing girl. I don't see how we could have any problems. Angela spoke very sincerely and kindly. Lucian had already warned his women about the problematic effects of the Bloody Rose, Envy's influence, and Amelia's strange personality could create. Still, seeing Angela's sincerity in goodwill, he couldn't help but kiss her lips. Amelia was a little embarrassed because she had been plotting to boycott Lucian's wives for a long time to get more of his attention, but when she saw Angela's sincerity, she felt a little bad, after all, she doesn't even know Lucian's wives to be able to judge if they are just women taking advantage of him or if they are good people. But first, because Angela called Lucian hubby in such an intimidate and lovingly way, and second for the kiss he gave on her lips, Amelia's jealous again drove out any rational thoughts she wanted to have. Although it is already night, the beautiful two moons illuminate the beach very well, and Amelia could see the lips of her beloved brother in contact with Angela's lips. After that intimate act, Angela couldn't help smiling with a slightly flushed face even though they were under the cold night sea wind. Amelia has never kissed anyone on the lips, but it is very obvious to her that her brother kisses very well. And, of course, once again, her feelings of wanting to try a conflict with her thoughts that it is very wrong to cross that line. But since she doesn't want to let Lucian know about her feelings, and she also doesn't want to sound irrational by being rude to Angela, she smiled. Okay, I'll try my best. Lucian knows that the situation is not going to be that simple, but he is happy that Amelia at least seems willing to get along with his wives. Also, he is happy that her first contact is with Angela, who is a calm and kind woman. Still, he understands that some problems with the girls like Rose, Mia, and others with more spoiled attitudes will happen at some point, and of course, he will deal with that. Then Lucian brought Amelia's hand to Oya's head. Even the big tigress understands that Amelia is different from Lucian's wives, and that is why she did not want to create problems. But she would not hide her hostility to envy. Oya is an adorable big cat, and her daughter, little Ko, is also super cute. I'm sure you will enjoy meeting her. Lucian spoke as he stroked Oya's soft fur. While Envy asked L.U.S.T several questions about Lucian and his wives, she also paid attention to their conversation. And because Amelia seemed to be becoming very friendly, Envy started to get worried about her planes. Don't try turning Amelia against me, Lucian. We are partners just like you and L.U.S.T. The sole contract prevents us from harming each other, and you know it. Envy looked at Lucian with a slightly hostile expression. She didn't like him trying to allure Amelia by offering her power. That is her purpose and not his. In addition to the hostility in Envy's expression, Lucian can also see a little fear, and it made him feel very good. He knows that he can't really hurt her physically other than to cause some pain by confining her demonic energy, but if he can cause her fear and discomfort, it could be a way to prevent her from manipulating Amelia. Lucian took a step towards Amelia and slowly warped his arm around her waist. Amelia was surprised by his subtle action, but in addition to her body, not wanting to be away from him, her mind also wants to start marking her place. Then he smiled provocatively at Envy. Oh, don't talk bullshit. I just want to help my sister, just like you should wanting to help yours. Envy started to get angry at Lucian, but a part of her knows he is right. Still, she wouldn't take a step back. Don't make it look like I'm the villain here. We're all on the same team. Ha ha ha. Lucian started to laugh while continuing to hug Amelia's waist, keeping their bodies in touch. While Envy frowned, Lucian spoke. Same team, right? As long as I'm a yes. 
E.X. slave for you and a trophy for Amelia. Envy was furious, more furious than she has been in a long time. Not because Lucian's words were absurd, but because it is exactly her plan. She saw Amelia's expression grow sad as she hid her face on Lucian's chest. Envy quickly had to think of an answer. Then she started to make a fake smile. Oh, I know what you're doing. You're trying to avoid the battle because you know you can't win this competition, right? Envy thought her words would completely break Lucian's confident attitude, but then L.U.S.T and Angela started to laugh, leaving Envy and Amelia confused. Envy even though she saw the big tigress shake her head with a disappointed expression in her eyes. Lucian also shook his head. Was that your best move? I'm sorry to inform you, but actually, my girls and I are eager to kill those shitty racists. You brought your pawns here to be annihilated. While Envy didn't know what to think, Lucian felt Amelia trying to get away from him, so he gently pulled her body towards him while he spoke lovingly. It has nothing to do with you, sister. You don't need tricks to get my affection and help. You will always have a special place in my arms and in my heart, not in my way, but in the way you want. Thump thump Amelia's heart beat faster when she heard Lucian's loving words. Even without the soul connection, she is sure his words are true. At that moment, she had no doubts that she could have anything from him. So all of her chaotic feelings and doubts came down to one issue. In what way do I want to be in his arms? Amelia couldn't help wondering. Now Amelia understood that she has had this doubt for many years, and if she does not try harder to understand her feelings, this doubt will keep messing up her for a long time. Understanding her own feelings. Amelia did not know that it is so complicated. And when thinking about that, she couldn't help comparing herself to her main rival. How did Sophia understand her feelings? How can she cross that line that should not be crossed? How can she accept becoming her own brother's wife? Doubts and more doubts are all in Amelia's mind now. While Amelia's mind is in chaos, her body couldn't feel better under Lucian's gentle caresses. He doesn't want to force her into anything and just give Amelia what she wants. Of course, as long as it is not harmful to his family, or rather, their family. But Envy is not someone who gets confused and backs off, on the contrary, she always has an answer. She quickly started talking to Amelia mentally. Really? Are you going to let him manipulate and seduce you that easy? Amelia didn't answer Envy, so she continued. I don't care what way you want him. As your man or your brother, the path is still the same. If you want him, it must be you who makes him want you first. Although Amelia is still not responding, Envy knew she is listening, so she continued. You, or rather, us as partners, need to be in control of the situation. This does not mean that it will be harmful to your brother, but that we will take good care of him. Envy's manipulations are always clear to Amelia. Although they can't hurt each other, they can modify words to make things sound better than they really are. Still, some things cannot help but to make sense to Amelia. Especially the part where Envy says they'll take care of Lucian. Yes. I want to take care of him. I want to give him my best. I want to give him all of me. Amelia started to think to herself. Even if I lead our relationship, it will not be bad for him. Yes, he will always have me to help. To hug him. And. Even if he needs other things. I must be the only one responsible for taking care of my brother. While Amelia's possessive desires grew more than ever, and she began to generate a lot of demonic energy. And that cold energy started to enter Lucian's body as she hugged him tighter. Lucian felt the cold demonic energy generated by Amelia's envy entering his body. He thought it wasn't good for a second, but then he realized that it would always be a part of Amelia. And he also understood that he couldn't fight it, after all, just as his nature is now luxurious, Amelia's will be jealous. Instead of trying to change her, Lucian wants to accept her in every way. His warm and comfortable demonic energy began to mix with her cold energy inside their bodies, creating something unique, 
never seen before. The pleasure they both began to feel comes along with a possessive feeling that Lucian has never felt before. At that moment, Lucian couldn't help but crave Amelia staying in his arms like that forever, and that she would only belong to him. Amelia was feeling the same way as Lucian, but then as if a wheel of emotions spun inside their bodies, the warm part of that new demonic energy started to make them feel so comfortable and loved. That pleasure of being in each other's arms prevented them from feeling any negative feelings. While Lucian and Amelia created something incredible and new, L.U.S.T and Envy watched everything with shocked expressions. But while Envy feared the unknown while wanting to have control over that, L.U.S.T started to smile because Lucian again surprised her in a good way. BDNVL.MNV couldn't help but be jealous of Amelia. She desires to be in Lucian's arms in that way too. Although L.U.S.T couldn't help but be a little jealous too, she fears nothing and feels very good because Lucian is her husband. They have the strongest and most amazing soul contract of all, and together they share an incredibly powerful and mutual love. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me in read advanced chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.fi.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 231 the Devil's Warm Embrace You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 231. The Devil's Warm Embrace While Amelia felt better than ever, Lucian felt his possessiveness as intense as ever. For the first time, for a few seconds, he just thought of holding Amelia in his arms, and anything else seemed secondary. The mix of demonic energies this way is entirely out of Amelia's control, and in her mind, there is nothing but Lucian. But although Lucian also loves that energy a lot, it didn't seem to control him, but he seems to be slowly taking control not only of his mental state but also of this new energy. Lucian stopped hugging Amelia tightly and just gently stroked her hair while she hugged him tightly and kept her face pressed against his chest. Then he sent a mental message to LUST. Can you feel it? L.U.S.T quickly replied. Yes but I have never seen anything like this. Of course, my sister's previous hosts have already tried to mix their demonic energies, but it has never worked, until now. Lucian knew that L.U.S.T did not like to talk about her previous hosts, but he still had to ask. Did your previous hosts never cooperate with your sisters? L.U.S.T answered sincerely. I don't think so. All of them, except for Sloth, think my demonic energy is the worst and weakest. Still, my memories are not very clear. It's like I have read it in a book and never really lived it. Lucian can feel that L.U.S.T did not want to talk about her past, and neither did he, so they focused on the present and the new and incredible energy they are creating. Although L.U.S.T and Envy can feel the energy in Lucian and Amelia because they are connected, the energy itself is only in the siblings' bodies. But just as Lucian can easily pass his demonic energy to women's bodies, he thinks he can give some of the new energy to LUST. He wanted to walk to L.U.S.T and kiss her, but Amelia is hugging him like a koala clinging to her mother. And of course, he doesn't want to drive his sister away from his arms. L.U.S.T noticed that and quickly appeared beside him. Lucian used one of his arms to continue hugging Amelia, and the other naturally wrapped around L.U.S.T's waist as their lips connected. Amazing. This seems much more powerful than just your demonic energy alone. L.U.S.T couldn't help but comment in Lucian's mind while experiencing the new demonic energy he is generating with Amelia. L.U.S.T first felt the great pleasure that the new energy is causing her, but quickly she also felt the other side of the energy. The cold feeling made her jealousy and possessiveness more intense than ever. And of course, it brought up thoughts about the person L.U.S.T fears most, Lucian's mother. 
L.U.S.T started to hug Lucian tighter together with Amelia, and now Lucian feels like two koalas are clinging to him. First, Lucian is impressed that the new energy influenced L.U.S.T that much, but he soon understood that those possessive feelings that almost took over his mind are really very powerful. That made him feel bad for Amelia because while it is not exactly bad to deal with his thirst for pleasure, not only for his sister but also for envy, it must be complicated for her to deal with those strange feelings. But it is not as envy and Amelia are just jealous and envious of others. The demonic energy of all the sins are very complex, and even they don't fully understand them yet. Lucian has no way of knowing the feelings she has for him deep in her heart. Nor does she understand those feelings yet. But he understood that by wanting something very much and achieving it, Amelia and Envy can generate a lot of demonic energy, and when their ways mix with his, something even more incredible is generated. Envy never wanted to admit it, but what she and her hosts have always been looking for is the pleasure of getting something they really want. But now, seeing how the pleasure Amelia is feeling not only because Lucian causes it in any woman, but also because Amelia is fulfilling her heart's desire, Envy has to admit that the cooperation with L. U.S.T and Lucian can make them become more powerful than ever. And the situation just got better. Right now, Amelia knows that L.U.S.T is kissing Lucian, which is why she is hugging him even more tightly while her jealousy only grows. Even Envy couldn't help but be jealous not only of Amelia but also of L.U.S.T, because it is clear that they both feel very good in Lucian's arms. But while they are all jealous, they are also very pleased. L.U.S.T has no doubt about Lucian's love for her, Amelia is being embraced by Lucian after he sincerely said that he would give her whatever she wants, especially affection, Envy is seeing her host generating a lot of demonic energy for them. And Lucian, well, for him, the most important thing is to keep his girls safe and happy in his arms, so he is the person who is generating more demonic energy. This situation is like a wheel that never stops turning. Lucian can't help but be happy because it is very clear to him how much stronger they can all become using this cooperation. Lucian can already imagine several methods of improving this situation even further. Of course, the most obvious method is to give Amelia new goals. She is now very happy to just be hugging him, but he could show her that there are much more pleasant things than hugs. And after making her desire it so much, he would give it to her in more incredible ways than she could ever imagine and so they would generate much more of this incredible new demonic energy. Lucian couldn't help but imagine himself as a demon who would tempt his sister, but in fact, he wouldn't ask for anything in return and would just make her decide for something to give it to her. Not only does this situation look strangely funny, but there is nothing bad for Amelia, on the contrary, he will make her happier and happier by always fulfilling the new desires she will have. Of course, all of Lucian's plans can only be completed if the cute and stubborn Amelia is willing to be honest with her own feelings. And well, if she can't do it alone, he will help her. And of course, their competition will be the first step on that journey. After almost two minutes, Lucian stopped, devouring L.U.S.T's mouth with their passionate wet kiss. But she continued to do tap kisses on his lips as her hands ran down his body towards his C.O.C.K. Lucian arouses that kind of feeling in L.U.S.T at any time and any place, and she is not shy when there are only women, possibly Lucian's S.E.X.U.L partners, around them. Amelia heard the e that are dot o dot t that i dot c sounds of l dot u dot s dot t's lips moving madly over Lucian's, and it felt like a hammer pounding on her heart. She wants to be able to push l dot u dot s dot t away and be the only one in Lucian's arms. But even though her current actions are already a big flag, she doesn't want to seem to want Lucian's wife's place. Despite this seeming more and more obvious, even to her stubborn mind and confused heart. Then Amelia continued to hug Lucian tightly while L.U.S.T kissed him, and he and Envy faced each other. Lucian had already planned a strategy to deal with Amelia, where although he would benefit too, benefiting her would be his primary goal. But what about Envy? 
Although she is L.U.S.T. sister, he knows that Envy has always treated his beloved L.U.S.T. rudely, and now she is not exactly a good friend for Amelia. They are a team now. Envy has a sole contract with Amelia. So Lucien understands that she is part of their family. Still, he can't get real affection for Envy. He can't help but compare Envy to Olivia. Lucien is still developing his relationship.i.p.s, but his feelings for Olivia are already genuine, and it started to be that way when they understood each other. There was no need for manipulations or violence. Despite the SEX, they had first was intense, at no time did Lucien really hurt Olivia. And so with him acting in his unique way, and she accepted him, they started this incredible relationship. But Lucien understands that with envy, things will not be that easy. It is not really possible to compare an injured and traumatized woman with a great manipulating demon. And because envy is so different, with a body made of demonic energy and thousands of years of experience and manipulations, Lucian feels that he can be really intense with her, without the fear of breaking her. You know, you can also be here. Lucian smiled at envy while opening his arms. Envy could imagine Lucian's plans, and she also has her own thoughts of being the only one leading their cooperation. She smiled at Lucian as she spoke provocatively. You really are something, but don't think that you can manipulate and seduce me like you're doing with Amelia. Lucian slowly shook his head. You are so wrong, Envy. Not everything is done with games and manipulations, on the contrary, with me, things are straightforward and very clear. Oh, come on. Do you really think I believe that bullshit? All I see is a man who wants more women than he can take care of. And even his sisters can't escape from his cx.u.a.l desire. Envy spoke in a provocative tone. While Amelia heard Envy's words, she looked up and saw a confident smile on Lucian's face. She couldn't help but smile because she is sure that Envy is the only one there talking bullshit. Lucian hasn't done anything wrong to her this time and just let her hug him to her heart's content. And although Amelia still thinks it's wrong to cross that line, a part of her can't help but envy L.U.S.T. and Angela for those fantastic kisses they had with Lucian. And Envy noticed that when Amelia looks at Lucian, it's with more and more affectionate every time. Of course, that has its positive side. Still, Envy doesn't want things to happen in Lucian's way, but in hers. We have to go, Amelia. Your brother and his women have to rest so we can battle tomorrow. Envy spoke as she continued to gaze at Lucian. Amelia is looking forward to the battle. She could already imagine herself beating all of Lucian's wives on the battlefield while he watches her with an impressed and proud expression. Still, her mind and body could not come to terms. While she wants to say goodbye, her arms just tighten around Lucian's waist even more. Lucian gently kissed Amelia's forehead. You can come to my. Our home today, it won't change our competition. We should stay together from now on. Yes, I want to. I want to stay like this in your arms forever. And yes, I want you to kiss me even more lovingly than you do with LUST. Amelia exclaimed in her mind the words she is not able to speak out loud yet. Then she smiled confidently at Lucian. We will have plenty of time to be together later. But you can't go back on your words. After I win the battle, I will dictate the rules. Lucian smiled as he touched Amelia's forehead with his. And if I win, Envy will help me get her copy ability. But regardless of who wins, I won't let you leave my arms anymore, sis. His words have the incredible ability to enter Amelia's heart and make her feel very comfortable and pleasantly warm. And to have not only more of that sensation, but also all the other good things that she can only have with her brother, Amelia stopped hugging him and started to step back. For her, the objective is clear. To win the battle and prove to be the most incredible woman in his life, the one to whom he must keep closest to him forever. How long do you need to prepare your troops? Amelia asked. Lucian quickly replied. 
We will be ready tomorrow at 10 o'clock a.m. Amelia thought Lucian was overconfident, after all, his troops should need some time to rest after the long journey. I can give you more time. Lucian shook his head. But I don't want to waste any more time away from you. We have a lot of things to do, and so we shouldn't keep the games any longer, not this kind of game. Amelia noticed Lucian's seductive tone when talking about games, and of course, she blushed as her mind thought many wrong things. Okay. See you on the battlefield tomorrow at 10 o'clock a.m. Amelia quickly spoke as she turned to run as she was getting very embarrassed, mainly because she had shown such an affectionate side by hugging Lucian that way for so long. Good night, sis, Lucian spoke in a tender and calm tone. Amelia couldn't help but smile because she is finally getting Lucian's affection that she always wanted. Good night. Brother. Then Amelia ran quickly towards the hill where her troops camp is set up. Envy's body started to dematerialize when she stood at a certain distance from Amelia, and even while she turned into a purple haze, Envy kept gazing at Lucian with a strange expression. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me in read advanced chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.fi.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 232 Boosted girls you are listening at novelfull.audio. As Amelia and Envy returned to the Light Empire soldiers camp, L.U.S.T continued to kiss and tease Lucian. After the passionate kiss that Lucian gave her to share the new demonic energy he generated with Amelia, L.U.S.T really got horny, and now she wants to start an incredible love session with him even on the beach. Lucian's mind is totally focused on the competition and to tempt Amelia in every way he can to make them both get stronger and stronger quickly. Still, he would never neglect his women, even when they just acting on their selfish desires, he will always do his best to give them everything they want. Embracing L.U.S.T's waist with one arm, Lucian began to return the kisses she has been giving his lips for a while. His other open arm is a clear invitation to Angela who wasted no time and hugged him. Then, Lucian started kissing both of his sweet wives. And Oya could only roll her eyes, with obvious jealousy. What's the problem? Lucian mentally asked Angela as he sucked on her mature lips, which he loves so much. Angela hid her face on Lucian's chest as she spoke in a sad tone. I think Amelia doesn't like me. I'm sorry for disappointing you, hubby. Lucian slightly bit Angela's ear. That was supposed to be a punishment, but she only felt pleasure. Then he spoke in a loving tone. Never again think that you disappoint me. I am very proud to have such an amazing woman like you as my wife. Lucian quickly continued talking while kissing Angela's cheek. You are really fantastic, my beautiful blue dot haired queen. Didn't you see how shocked Envy was when she heard of your quick advance to the second layer of the mortal realm? Angela couldn't help but smile, mainly because she can feel part of Lucian's pride for her through their connection. He's always fulfilling all of her wishes, so all Angela really wants now is to be a good wife for him. I'm glad I didn't let you down, but I still feel bad that I didn't make a good first impression on your sister. I know we should get along. Angela spoke as she kissed Lucian's chest. L.U.S.T laughed. You didn't do anything wrong, Angela. I find it difficult for Amelia to get along with any of Lucian's wives. Also, I believe that the person she is most jealous of is Sophia, after all, her relationship with Lucian has been causing her pain for a long time. Lucian couldn't help regret being a bad brother. But how was I supposed to know that she just wanted affection? She always acted in a very weird way. L.U.S.T made a thoughtful expression. Maybe it's because of the side effects of the bloody rose. Still, there is a reason why Envy chose her so quickly. Amelia will always be like that or at least a part of her will. 
It doesn't matter. She's just unsatisfied now. As soon as I make her completely satisfied, she won't cause too many problems. I hope. Lucian responded. L.U.S.T quickly responded. But it won't be that easy. Amelia, as the host of another great demon, she is not affected by your demonic charm as much as other people. You are able to make her feel that good because of her feelings for you, but in bed, you'll need to give her a lot more demonic energy to make her really satisfied. Lucian used his tail to tease L.U.S.T. So, are you already jealous of her? L.U.S.T. was already horny, so Lucian's teasings have an even more impacting effect on her. And of course, she doesn't want to waste time trying to hide something he already knows. Yes, I am jealous. I know you will need to spend a lot of time with her. And this is the best because you can share this new demonic energy with your other wives, and everyone will get stronger faster than expected. L.U.S.T. answered honestly. Lucian couldn't help shaking his head. Still, I need to make Amelia want it more and more. And who is better than you to make her jealous? Sophia. L.U.S.T. instantly responded. L.U. S.T. could already predict that when Sophia returns, the best way for Lucian to stay strong will be to use his relationship with them. Now that she saw him creating something new with Amelia, L.U.S.T. couldn't help wondering why he hadn't done it with Sophia too. But then she realized that it had to do with the fact that Amelia was very jealous of her and Angela. Lucian had only explored the pleasure of S.E.X. with Sophia and did not try anything in the style of sloth as they did not have time at that moment. Now, L.U.S.T. could imagine Sophia and Amelia in Lucian's arms as they create something new and incredible. And of course, L.U.S.T. can't help feeling jealous and envious. But at the same time, she felt Lucian's tail wrap around hers as he hugged her waist tighter. Whenever she feels insecure, he makes her feel so wonderfully loved that all her worries immediately disappear. As Lucian gently kissed L.U.S.T.'s neck, she imagined the scene where Sophia and Amelia are in his arms on the bed, but this time she is there too, on his chest. Neglect is a concern that none of Lucian's wives need to have. When creating the new demonic energy with Amelia, Lucian first thought of using it to strengthen Amelia, and then right afterward, how to use it to strengthen his women. And so it always will be. But Lucian knows that sometimes words and even the connection they have is insufficient. But actions, especially those that only he can do, never stop working. Angela and L.U.S.T.'s M.O.I.N.S. of pleasure just from Lucian's touches and kisses soon started to get loud as Oya started to get uncomfortable because she was not receiving pats. Lucian wants to start a big love session and pay attention to all of his girls right now, but he still has responsibilities to take care of before the end of the night. Angela, my dear, I need to check the troops before I go home. Do you want to go home before me? Lucian asked as he stroked her beautiful and perfectly s.e. xys. Okay, I'll return home and wait for you, hubby. Angela wanted to stay with Lucian all the time, but she knows he has to take care of the troops, and she doesn't like to act spoiled. Lucian likes to pamper his girls, but women with personalities similar to Angela's will always be his weakness, along with fluffy demi.human ears, of course. He rubbed his nose over the incredibly soft and fragrant skin of Angela's face. Did you do it on purpose? Angela giggled. What are you talking about? About you being more and more attractive. If you keep acting like that, I won't take care of the troops, and I'll eat you right here on the beach. Lucian spoke jokingly. She couldn't help but keep giggling because of Lucian's words and his caresses, which she never got bored with. But isn't it a wife's duty to always be attractive to her husband? Lucian made a thoughtful expression while caressing her ass. I'm not sure about all wife's duties, but if it's like you say, you're doing it perfectly well, my sweetheart. Angela knows the extra appeal that her mature body has on Lucian, and of course, she is very proud of it. 
She smiled in a gentle and alluring way as she ran her hand over his C.O.C.K., then take care of the troops quickly, and when you return home, I will show you more about a wife's duties. L.U.S.T. took a step back, leaving Lucian's arms free for him to hug and kiss Angela while he opens the Purple World portal. Lucian did not ask if Oya wanted to go back home because he can feel that she prefers to stay by his side, and of course, her company is always welcome, so only Angela entered the portal after saying goodbye to him. He stroked and kissed the great tigress's forehead before helping L.U.S.T. mount her and then he mounted Oya as well. Then Oya ran towards Lucian's troops camp. For Lucian and his girls, traveling on top of Oya's soft fur is undoubtedly very comfortable, but for the mama tigresses, it is even better because whenever Lucian is riding her, he caresses her. And because Oya has incredible strength and control over her expanded size, she feels no discomfort even when three people are riding her at the same time. With more than three people on top of her, the problem is not weight but space. Still, her expanded size seems to be linked to her level of power, so she will soon be able to become even bigger, becoming more and more deadly in battle alongside Lucian. After a while, Lucian, Oya, and L.U.S.T. arrived at the camp. Lucian's troops had already organized the camp perfectly. Some of the girls were resting, while another part, especially the last girls to receive Lucian's demonic energy during the journey, were even training to help their bodies to process their master's energy. Lucian explained to his troops that he had arranged the battle for 10 o'clock a.m. the next day. All of the girls are looking forward to killing the shitty racists that have done so much harm to their people, so no one had any complaints. Then he started a great, boosting, session with his female troops. Since all of the female troops receiving his kisses and caress during the journey while on top of Oya, Lucian focused mainly on the first women that have received his attention during the journey, since the last ones did not need another boost because they still have a lot of his demonic energy in their bodies. While his male troops, mercenaries, and adventurers slept, Lucian spent 10 hours of the 15 he has until 10 o'clock a.m. the next day booting his female troops. The day is almost dawn when Lucian returned to the Purple World and left his female troops very energetic, waiting for his return. The five hours that Lucian still has until the battle time became more than eight hours in the Purple World, showing that the 1.5x time dilation is already approximately 1.6x, and it is because it improves according to his power level. Lucian used those eight hours to give all the love and pleasure he can to his beloved wives, making them incredibly boosted and satisfied. The amazing love session not only booted the girls, but as always, it also brought them closer to breaking barriers of the layers of power. Also, while some girls like Astrid and Rose came very close to breaking through the barrier of the first layer of the mortal realm, Cassidy did that, reaching its second layer. Although Angela had an advantage of a few days, Cassidy continued to show how incredible her potential and connection with Lucian are, causing the other girls to be a little jealous. Now, in addition to L.U.S.T., whose power is already of a person of the second layer of the mortal realm, Lucian also has his other two beautiful queens at this power level while he is in the third layer. But when it comes to Lucian and his women, things are not so simple. Despite their power level, having Lucian's demonic energy in their bodies, they are really boosted, being much stronger than ordinary people up to three layers above them, and that effect will only improve as Lucian's demonic energy gets stronger. Because of that, even his troops from S and SS. Ranks can be lethal like mortal realm people against zero realm people, and even though they are going to face an army of 200,000 well. trained and equipped soldiers, Lucian's troops have no disadvantages, and even they would be the favorites to win for any wise viewers who can see the miracles that Lucian can do to his girls. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me in read advanced chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.fi.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 233 by his side you are listening at novelfull.audio. 
Lucian left the Purple World Portal at his troops' camp at 9.30 a.m. Wearing his updated armor, he flapped his wings and felt no discomfort. Rebecca did an incredible job making the chest piece even though it's only made out of super dot resistant leather, then she enchanted it using the new tools from her new workshop. His onyx horns shone, which added to his beautiful red hair, devilishly perfect face, and a provocative smile that made the hearts of his female troops beat faster from excitement, causes most males to feel indignant. Lorelei couldn't contain her smile when she remembered that extra boost she received during the night. In fact, everyone could see that she is increasingly standing out among the troops and receiving more attention from Lucian. Also, added to her natural charisma, Lorelei is also developing her leadership abilities, which make her more and more loved and admired by the other girls who think it makes sense for her to receive more attention from Lucian for being so incredible. Lucian's wives like to play a strange game where they wonder who will be the next woman to enter their family core. And right now, Lorelai is one of the women who has the most votes. They don't bet money, but things like more time with Lucian, the right to wash his back in the bath, or to sit on his lap during meals on certain days. Another thing about Lorelai is that she never tries to get Lucian's attention directly in a forced way like most of his other troops. She uses subtle means to try to seduce him during her general training, and especially during private training sessions, where he teaches her to master her skills with the black katana he gave her as a gift. So when Lorelai approached him now, Lucian knew that she has something important to say. Still, she would not miss the opportunity to show her affection to him. Good morning, master. Lorelai greeted Lucian with a bright smile on her beautiful face. Lucian smiled and brought his lips to her ear, making Lorelai very excited and even a little embarrassed. Good morning, Lorelai, Lucian spoke tenderly and kissed quickly, but affectionately on her sweet lips. For a moment, Lorelai forgot about everything and just enjoyed Lucian's kiss, but she quickly focused again and started to explain what she has to report. Dot, master. I brought a group of scouts to the coast as you ordered, and we saw some big shi. Peters to the south. There are approximately ten of them, staying less than two hundred meters away from the beach. Lucian made a thoughtful expression. I didn't see any shi. Peters yesterday. Amelia seems to have some tricks. L.U.S.T, who had already materialized her body alongside Lucian, couldn't help commenting. Smart move. She can use the SHI.PDS to move troops on our flank and use her mages there to bomb us from another angle. As they would be fighting on the beach, Amelia having SHI.PDS means that her troops will be able to use a part of the battlefield that Lucian's troops cannot, well, not with conventional means. Lucian couldn't help but smile. Envy must already know that Angela has water slash ice affinity, but she doesn't know about Marie and Lena, who are not much weaker than their mother now. Neola, who is part of the group of women that left the portal, asked. But they are the base of our magical defenses. Isn't that a problem? Lucian strokes her face. Now we have a lot of wizards and mages in our troops. They can handle magical attacks from enemies long enough for Angela to deal with the SHI.P.S. After defeating the SHI.P.S., she can focus on our defenses again. The troops can keep switching out groups of mages so they don't get too exhausted while supporting Angela. All of the girls nodded, agreeing with Lucian. Angela and other girls who are still at home getting ready would also agree. Then Lucian looked at Neola, Kylie, and Lorelai. Let everyone know to get ready. Send someone to tell Alden too. We don't have much time. Before Lucian could tell Scarlet and Olivia to prepare the mercenaries and adventurers, Lorelai quickly said. Everyone is already ready, waiting for your orders, Master. Lucian couldn't help being surprised, and Lorelai quickly explained. The girls were unable to sleep after. Our night training. Everyone is looking forward to fighting alongside you, Master, especially after knowing how you rewarded us for the last battle. Lorelai continued to explain. As everyone was warned of the time agreed for the battle, Alden also got his group ready. 
so he spoke to the mercenaries and adventurers who had also rested well during the day. Now everyone is on the beach, ready to fight. Lucian quickly focused his senses and noticed that really everyone is at the beach. The last women of his troops are moving there as well. I thought it would be more difficult to deal with the adventurers. Lucian couldn't help but think out loud. Lorelei quickly comment. Master is such an incredible, powerful, and wise king. There is no reason for people to want to create problems. Some of Lucian's wives couldn't help laughing. They certainly find him very incredible, but that is just one more reason for many men to be jealous and create problems. Still, they know the real reason why everyone is behaving. Brutal, scary, and authoritative. That's why they won't create trouble. No one wants to disobey the devil. L.U.S.T proudly commented. She loves every part of Lucian's personality. Cassidy was the first to nod in agreement with L.U.S.T's words. She had so many problems before because her enemies didn't fear her like they do Lucian. Well, if everyone is ready, let's go, Lucian spoke before heading towards the beach with his troops and wives. Arriving at the beach, Lucian saw his female troops in an organized formation. Rebecca's group of blacksmith apprentices used the last few weeks to focus entirely on creating black armor just like Lucian's original 600 troops. The troops' armor is black, just not made from black steel like the armor Lucian and his wives have, but they are very well made with the best materials that Lucian has now. Behind the group of women in black armor are Lucian's male troops. They also painted their armor black. The armor is originally from the Light Empire soldiers. On one side of Lucian's 600 male troops is the group of 2,000 mercenaries, and on the other side, is the group of 2,000 adventurers. Although Olivia and Scarlet prefer to fight near Lucian, they understand that it is very good for the morale of mercenaries and adventurers to follow their lead. Plus, it is perfect that Lucian can give orders to them immediately by having mental communication with one of his wives leading the groups, and of course, Olivia and Scarlet are the most suitable for this task. While Lucian gave the last orders to everyone and prepared to go to the battlefield, he opened the portal of the Purple World since all of his wives are ready and want to be at his side in front of his army. Lucian was surprised to see Rebecca and Madeline leave the portal wearing black steel armor like his other wives, and leaving only the cute young Kara at home. Her relationship with them is still in development, and although Rebecca said she would fight alongside Lucian if he wants it, she still seemed to be uncertain about actually fighting. But Madeline made it clear that she would be too afraid to fight, especially against the scary Light Empire soldiers. You don't have to do this. You know that. Right. Lucian spoke as he approached them. Rebecca smiled as she spun a big warhammer in her hands. I'm already your wife, and everyone can see that. Although I'm grateful that we are developing our relationship slowly, I have the duty and honor to fight by your side, hubby. Her words were bold, but Rebecca still blushed when Lucian kissed her in front of everyone. Madeline looked anxious and embarrassed but actually, she is sure that nothing bad will happen to her while Lucian protects her. When he smiled affectionately at her, she quickly hugged him and hid her face in his chest. I, I'm a little afraid, but I also want to participate in this, not just to get revenge, but also to be by your side. Beside my husband. Lucian couldn't help but smile and hug Madeline tightly. So he placed her on Oya before mounting behind her. We have to go, or Amelia will come after us. As Lucian seems to have reached an agreement with Oya where he is mounting her whenever possible, Lucian's wives came to an agreement of not having to walk beside him, but also still to be by his side. That is, with the help of Angela, Rose, Lena, and Marie, who, like other powerful mages near or above the mortal realm, can create solid surfaces with their magical affinities and move them in the air. Rose created a large flat rock while Angela, Marie, and Lena created flat surfaces of ice for them, and Lucian's other wives stand on top of it. While this is a method for Lucian's wives to not have to walk below him while he is mounted on Oya, it will also be how they move in combat from now on. 
The girls' mana is now enough for them to be able to stay in the air for several hours without it hindering them from using their magic to attack the enemy group or defend Lucian's troops and themselves. Plus, this way, they can help Lucian's other wives who don't have really good mobility like Angela taking Cassidy across the battlefield quickly, or Rose keeping Miola, Galana, and a small group of archers in the air, flanking their enemies. So most of Lucian's wives got on the four floating surfaces made by the mage girls. Lena invited Lorelai to join the girls on her ice surface, and since Lucian didn't mind that, Lorelai quickly accepted the offer. Still, four girls did not immediately join the women on the floating surfaces. L.U.S.T, Astrid, Arya, and Ella, as well as Lucian, have the incredible and enviable ability to fly. L.U.S.T could always fly because she has total control over her body that is made from demonic energy, but Astrid, Arya, and Ella had to train a lot in the purple world to be able to actually fly, and although they have not yet mastered this ability, they are already able to fly at a certain distance, at a moderate speed, but only for an hour before they get tired. Astrid has small wings like L.U.S.T's, so she flies by magic and needs to increase her power to improve her flight. But Arya and Ella really do have very light bodies and large feathers that allow them to fly. Still, they need to strengthen their bodies to fly faster and for longer. And Lucian, of course, can fly because of his big and powerful wings create mighty waves of wind, but L.U.S.T also said that his wings are magical and from the moment he learns to control this, he will be able to keep himself in the air even if he only flaps his wings slowly as she and Astrid do. He spent a small part of the journey training his flight, and although he can already fly, he still can't control his wings perfectly. Still, he intends to incorporate flight during combat. So the group headed to the battlefield. Lucian, with Madeline wrapped in his arms, mounted on Oya in her expanded size. And at his side, four beautiful women flying with wings and many others on top of the floating surfaces of stone and ice. The incredible scene surprised all of the men and women in the mercenary and adventure groups. Lucian's female troops could not help dreaming of one day being on the floating surfaces besides him, or rather, in his arms like Madeline. But for now, everyone is delighted to follow him as his troops and their morale for the battle can't get any better. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me in read advanced chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.fi.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 234 L.U.S.T feels the danger you are listening at novel full.audio. The Great Light Empire Army is organized in a large formation on the beach in front of the big hill. The army of almost 200,000 soldiers occupies an entire mile of the beach even though they are very close to each other. Not all of the soldiers are there because Amelia and Dawn made a plan that comes down to flanking Lucian's troops by every side, including by the sea, using some shi.p.s. While groups of soldiers flanked the west at a significant distance to prevent them from getting noticed by Lucian before the battle begins, Amelia is in front of the army, waiting eagerly for her brother. Dressed in light white armor, Amelia looks stunning. She always liked to wear light armor because it gives her more mobility, which added to her incredible sword skills, makes her a lethal swordsman in combat. But now there is something else in Amelia's look. Since she started to become more aware of her feelings for Lucian, she also wants to wear nice clothes that will make her slim body more attractive to him. And it is really working. The small metal plates that only cover Amelia's most private parts enhance her curves and make the look very attractive. Amelia could take the breath away from any of the Light Empire army soldiers if they were brave enough to gaze at her. But it will not happen because they fear and respect Amelia so much. There are even rumors that the amazing Holy Light Envoy is the daughter of the Light God. No one wants to disrespect an immaculate saint like her, or they will end up being killed by her or Dawn. 
And since Dawn also respects Amelia too much to gaze at her body, only Envy did that. And of course, she couldn't help commenting in Amelia's mind. You look really beautiful and sexy now. Is this all for him? Is that something common that sisters do for their brothers? Shut the f. You. C. K up, Envy. Amelia responded as usual to Envy's provocations. Although she was annoyed by some of Lucian's strange teasing, when Amelia compares him and Envy, she quickly comes to the conclusion that Envy's teasing just sounds annoying while her brothers are strangely a little bit pleasurable. Amelia shook her head as she thought to herself. Oh come on, Amelia. Who are you trying to lie to? Even after two months, Amelia still remembers how pleasant the touch of Lucian on her Brie A.S.T.S. was. She can't deny that she likes a lot of things she says she doesn't want. While thinking about Lucian, Amelia couldn't help imagining several women around him, and of course, L.U.S.T. is Amelia's main concern now. I hope you are useful this time, Envy. Amela spoke in an annoyed tone to Envy in her mind. What do you mean? Envy asked although she can already imagine what Amelia is talking about. Amelia quickly explained. Don't you see how L.U.S.T. behaves? She does everything Lucian asks and supports him while you just try to manipulate me and do nothing really useful for us. Envy was upset by Amelia's words. This. This is your fault. Lucian generates a lot of demonic energy for them while you weren't really chasing your desires. But now everything is different because you are really trying to get what you want, that's your brother's D.I.C.K. N. No. Of course not. W. What are you talking about? Amelia was furious and embarrassed by Envy's words. Envy started to laugh, and Amelia quickly tried to explain. Did you forget that energy we generated together? That was our cooperation. It is not something strange and perverted. That's what I want, to be with my brother and to us cooperate to become stronger. Okay, okay. Envy couldn't help wanting to roll her eyes. So, focus on your noble goal, and don't worry about me. While you beat your brother, I will beat L.U.S.T. Amelia couldn't help but smile, imagining Envy beating L.U.S. T and humiliating her. After all, the purpose of this battle is not to show her power but to prove to Lucian how much his women, including L.U.S.T, are not as incredible as he thinks. And that new energy that Amelia created with Lucian is the best thing that could have happened as it shows him that Amelia is the perfect woman for him to focus his attention on and not the others he calls his wives. While Amelia is eagerly waiting for Lucian to arrive, Dawn is behind her maintaining the same posture for almost an hour. Wearing heavy silver armor with a large sun on its chest, Dawn holds her shining helmet in one hand and keeps the other hand on the grip of her sword. Dawn's discipline, even though she is the princess of the Light Empire, is inspiring to all of the troops behind her. Although they have been waiting for almost an hour in the bright sun, they will never falter for a second. But of course, many soldiers with a not dot so dot strong will begin to wonder why their enemies are taking so long to arrive, or rather, why they don't go fine to them instead of waiting. This is not the Light Empire's fighting style. Then at 9.58 am, a scout noticed movement on the horizon. Amelia should have seen it earlier because her eyes of a mortal realm peak person is far superior to those of zero realm people. Still, she was pacing back and forth with her mind full of peculiar thoughts and didn't notice Lucian's group approaching. Amelia's heart couldn't help but beat faster as she notices the small spot north on the beach. She hadn't been able to sleep last night, just imagining herself in Lucian's arms again. A part of her wants to give up the competition and accept Lucian's leadership as long as he holds her tight and doesn't let her out of his arms again. But for fear of having her feelings neglected, of being judged by others, and of having less of Lucian's affection than his wives, Amelia cannot give up on her plans. She has to prove herself more and more incredible to him, so that she is guaranteed a place next to Lucian that no one will never be able to take from her. 
While looking carefully at the spot on the beach, Amelia noticed that Lucian is moving in front of his group, mounted on the big white tigress and that there is a woman in his arms. The positive eagerness that Amelia was feeling started to turn into jealousy as she continues to focus on that scene the whole time that it takes Lucian to reach them, the girl will continue to enjoy what Amelia desires most. This feeling would certainly be painful for anyone. And Amelia's jealousy quickly increased as she realizes that there are women flying around her brother. Some of them have wings, while others are on floating surfaces. It is quite clear to Amelia that those women want to say something by not walking with the other people behind him but by flying side by side with Lucian. They are his women, right? Amelia asked Envy. But Envy did not answer Amelia. How could she even speak, being so shocked? Envy. What's the problem? Amelia can feel by the soul connection she has with Envy that something surprised her. Women. Do you mean the ones he had a CX with? Envy asked. Amelia rolled her eyes. I'm talking about those flying around him. They are his women, right? Yes, them too. Envy quickly responded. Amelia expected that, but she couldn't help being more jealous as she hears the truth. Then she started to think out loud. They are more than ten. That's. Wait. Amelia realized that there was something strange about Envy's response and asked her about that. What do you mean by them too? There are more. Envy quickly replied. Yes, all of the women behind him. Amelia felt a terrible sensation as Envy's response shocked her. But then she realized that Envy probably misunderstood he question. I'm talking about which of them are his wives. Did you become dumb, Envy? Envy was upset. I don't know who he calls a wife, but all of those women behind him are his women. Amelia was anxious again and looked at Lucian's group. Damn, Envy. I can see more than five hundred women. How can they all be his women? He's just one person. A little over two thousand, actually. Envy said. A little ove. W. Wait, H. How does? H. He, B. But, but. H. How can you be sure? Amelia went into shock and began to deny to herself that it is possible that her brother did it with more than two thousand women. Envy can understand why Amelia is in shock as she can't believe it as well. Still, the truth is right in front of them. I can feel L.U.S.T's demonic energy in the bodies of more than 2,000 women, precisely those just behind him. Envy explained. But, but. Amelia can't contain her growing jealousy. Can they just generate demonic energy by appreciating his body? Or other things like that? Well, that would generate very little demonic energy, imperceptible from this distance. They have a lot of demonic energy in their body. Lucian really gave them a lot of pleasure. Envy explained, making Amelia even more jealous and angry. B. But, but. Amelia can't control her feelings as she imagines more than 2,000 women having a share of her brother. I. I'm going to kill them. Envy laughed. Are you crazy? He's doing a much better job than Pride could do in the early stages of the mortal realm. Not to mention that the effects of his benefits will remain forever in their bodies while Pride focuses on buffs only while her followers are near her. Amelia understands how good a powerful army is, but she still can't accept sharing her brother with so many women. But. You can't think this is good. He. He's mine. Envy can't fully understand Amelia's feelings because she still doesn't feel that special thing for someone. Think about it, Amelia. Even if he has 2,000 women, he can just spend a few minutes with them each month while you will be the only one in his arms almost the whole time, every day. While Amelia imagined herself in Lucian's arms, Envy went on to explain. Now think again. While you get almost all of his attention, those 2,000 women will be jealous of you all the time. They will want to be in your place, but only you will be his favorite. 
This will generate a lot of demonic energy for us, making you stronger and stronger and thus becoming more and more important to him. There are many inconsistencies in Envy's plans, but it is also all that Amelia wants, and although she knows that Envy only thinks of her own good, the plan can work, especially the part where Amelia is Lucian's favorite and gets his full attention. Yes. Yes, I can do this. Amelia thought to herself. So what if there are more than two thousand women? Only I am his sister. It is only with me that he can make that incredible demonic energy. Envy is happy to see Amelia's confidence growing along with her ambition. And of course, she supports that. Exactly, Amelia. You must reclaim the rightful place that has always been yours. You must be his main wife and not L.U.S.T or anyone else. Yes. Amelia exclaimed. I must be his main why. But then she realized what she was about to say. She noticed that saying that doesn't seem bad or wrong. At that moment, something inside Amelia changed. That little part of her that refuses to cross the dangerous line that siblings shouldn't cross has started to disappear, or rather, it began to be consumed by the great part of her that wants Lucian in every way possible, not part of him, but all of him, only for her alone. His main wife. Sounds good to me, Amelia says as her eyes shine with expectation. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me in read advanced chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.FI.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 235 Evil you are listening at novelfull.audio. Lucian's group reached approximately 500 meters from Amelia's army. Then he signaled for his troops to wait while he and his wives continue walking towards the center of the battlefield. L.U.S.T felt a strange sensation and stopped flying, landed on top of Oya, and sat behind Lucian while hugging his waist. Amelia, Dawn, and the principal generals of the Light Empire also headed towards the center of the battlefield. In battles of this scale, it is normal for leaders to exchange a few words before the combat begins. Meanwhile, the troops on both sides faced each other. The soldiers of the Light Empire could not help laughing, seeing that their enemies are in mediocre numbers compared to their 200,000 troops. Still, their confidence is humble compared to the overconfidence that Lucian's female troops have in him and the power he has given them. As in many battles, both sides think they are fighting for the right cause and that they will win. But while the soldiers of the Light Empire declare themselves soldiers of the Light, fighting against the evil of the world in the name of the Light God, Lucian's female troops do not try to look cool and just admit that they fight for the rewards that only their master can give them, that is, his love, and of course, his d that I dot c dot k, at best both at the same time. There are also Lucian's male troops, mercenaries, and adventurers. These guys cannot deny that they are a little afraid as they are not as powerful as Lucian's female troops. But since Lucian's strategy is based on him and his girls facing the Light Empire army while the others just defend their rearguard and stand as reserve troops in case something goes wrong, they are a little relaxed. Lucian's group arrived in front of Amelia's group. He is still holding Madeline in his arms. Madeline already feels that it was worth using all her courage to stay by his side, even in this dangerous moment. Although she considers the Purple World House a very safe and comfortable place, the best place to be is in Lucian's arms, and Madeline wants to enjoy every second. But when she saw Amelia's angry and jealous look, Madeline couldn't help but be a little worried. Amelia is Lucian's sister, so all of his wives know they must get along with her. So, to avoid Amelia's gaze, Madeline looked away and noticed someone behind Dawn, a person she could never forget. Meanwhile, the members of the two groups faced each other while the mood became tenser and tenser. Dnav O.M. Lucian greeted Amelia in a very affectionate tone. Sister. Sister. 
Dawn couldn't help but exclaim as she is shocked and furious. She never thought she would hear that word from the devil. The Light Empire generals were as shocked and furious as Dawn. Heresy. Blasphemy. She is the Holy Light Envy. Yes, the daughter of Light God. How can she be the sister of a depraved and evil creature like you? Amelia would have killed that man who called Lucian depraved and made the others remain silent. But she didn't hear what they said. In fact, Amelia couldn't hear or think about anything right now, except for something that's driving her crazy. Everyone noticed Amelia staring at Lucian and thought she is about to say harsh words in response to his heresy. Lucian's wives don't know what to think while they are a little concerned about their first meeting with their sister. In law. In that second, the mood between them became so tense that they could feel the air getting heavy. Many people couldn't even breathe because they were nervous, waiting for Amelia's next words. And then she spoke, in a tone clearly upset, and also jealous. Did you really have CX with over 2,000 women? What? Dawn felt dizzy while her brain is unable to process those words. She really wants to have heard it wrong. Amelia's unexpected question shocked everyone, of course, on different levels and reasons. But everyone, without any exception, is surprised by that. Some people with a weaker will are unable to even close their mouths after hearing such words from Holy Light Envoy. Now everyone's attention is on Lucian and what he will say. Many of the generals couldn't help wondering if it is really possible for a man to have a CX with so many women during his life. Lucian looked into Amelia's eyes as he spoke honestly. Yes. This is the fastest way to make them strong, thus increasing the strength of my forces. But. Amelia didn't expect Lucian to admit that quickly. So, what does that energy we create together mean to you? Amelia asks. Lucian quickly responds. That energy will help us to become stronger even faster. And I will share it with my girls, making us more powerful. So, one day, we will be at the top of the power, and no one will be able to hurt any member of our family. Then he tenderly smiles at Amelia. To protect, care, love, and make my family happy is all I want. That is all of the ambition in my heart. Hearing Lucian's passionate and caring words, Amelia couldn't help but rethink her feelings and actions. Again, changes begin to appear in her heart as she understands that to protect, love, care, and make him happy is also her desire. Whatever direction and end the battle is going to take, there is only an end to this story. There is only one way for her to get off this battlefield, and that is in her brother's arms. Let's do it. Amelia smiles at Lucian. Lucian smiles too. Yes, let's d. He did not finish his words because he feels that something is wrong. Lucian is always aware of everything that happens around him, even when he is focused on several other things. Madeline was feeling a little afraid since she left the purple world, and Lucian understands that the situation is very tense and frightening for her. Unlike most of his girls who already have a stronger mind because of their personal experiences and their experiences with him, Madeline is still very fragile and traumatized. The closer they were to the Light Empire, the more fear Madeline felt, but the good sensations and the feeling of protection she feels in Lucian's arms made the cute cat.girl not want to hide or run away from the danger. But when they approached Amelia, Lucian felt Madeline becoming more afraid. He thought she was feeling like his other wives, who were a little worried about their first meeting with Amelia and what she would think of them. Still, unlike the little concern that his other wives are feeling, Madeline's fear has not stopped growing, leading her to panic while shaking and hiding her face in Lucian's chest. Madeline, what's wrong? Lucian asks her mentally. He. He's here. Madeline quickly responds. Who? That man. The captain I meet in the great forest. The one who said he would be delighted to know that I would always remember what his group did to my friends. 
Despite feeling very comfortable and safe in Lucien's arms, Madeline couldn't contain her fear while remembering the cruelty of that captain and his soldiers to her innocent friends. Because he can feel Madeline's fear, Lucien started to become extremely furious. He already hates all of the racist soldiers from the Light Empire, but that captain has his special attention for having done so much harm to his cute Madeline. But when Lucien is furious, he remains calm too. He knows that losing control will not allow him to make his enemies suffer. They do not deserve a quick death, but what he is about to do. Lucien hugs Madeline tighter as he kisses her head and talks to her mentally. Hey, my dear. Finding him is actually a good opportunity for us. Madeline is confused by Lucien's words. How can this be good? Well, this can help you start to get over what happened. Now we can take revenge on this man for what he did to your friends. She understands Lucien's words, but the situation is still very stressful for her. But. This man is so evil. I don't want to see him again. Lucien continues to gently stroke Madeline's head while making everyone else their weight, bewildered. Oh my love, you mistook it. He's not evil. Lucien spoke in a confident tone. Madeline is even more confused. Hmm, isn't he evil? Lucien notices that Madeline is getting calmer as she takes her focus off painful memories. He hates when his beloved girls are in pain. Then he speaks in an honest tone. No, he is not evil compared to me. I am really evil. Madeline quickly shakes her head without moving her face away from Lucien's chest. No. You are not evil. You are so loving and kind. Lucien laughs. I am like that only for the people I love, like you, my dear. But for everyone else, I'm different. For men like him, who hurt cute girls like you, I'm really evil. I am their nightmare. The one who makes them wish to die. Madeline has seen Lucien Fai. She knows how he acts to his enemies. But while living with him every day, seeing how loving and caring he is with her and so many other girls, she forgets that his nickname is Handsome Devil. In the end, only a few people are lucky enough to receive his affection, while others wish they never crossed his path. She thinks again of the suffering that her friends went through being tortured by that captain and his group, and then she imagines how Lucien is going to wash away their suffering with the blood of that damned man. Madeline takes a deep breath of Lucien's pleasant scent before turning around and pointing at a man behind Dawn. Him. While everyone is confused, including the man who is now a general, and does not remember Madeline. Lucien strokes her head and kisses her more. Are you going to be okay while I deal with him? Lucien asks as he rubs his nose on Madeline's fluffy and fragrant ears. Madeline hugs him tightly and kisses his lips. Yes, hubby. Please, do this for my friends. While Lucien and Madeline have their romantic moment, Amelia is confused and jealous, very jealous. Dawn is increasingly shocked by everything. She wants this to be a nightmare because nothing else makes sense. The Light Empire generals are like Dawn, extremely confused, and wanting to jump on Lucian and beat him to death. But L.U.S.T and Lucian's other wives are smiling because they know what is going to happen next, it is one of the classic scenes where Lucian makes someone piss themselves to death. They are not exactly masochists, but few people can claim not to be pleased to see a person who does very evil things to innocent people for pleasure, receiving their due punishment. That is something Lucian loves to do. He is merciless for those who do evil things. And his wives love to see him do it, even when it's a brutal scene. Lucian jumped off of Oya, and without needing to ask, Mia jumped off a floating rock beside them and hugged Madeline in his place. No one else's hug can be compared to Lucian's, but Madeline also feels good from being hugged by her sister. Lucian's family does not have only him, his wives also support each other. Lucian smiles at Madeline and Mia as L.U.S.T dematerializes her body and returns to inside his soul. Then he looks at Amelia. Amelia is surprised by Lucian's sudden action. 
she really wants to believe that he is walking towards her to hug her. But due to the conversation that he had with that girl, and the fact that she pointed to one of her generals makes Amelia sure that Lucian wants to do something to that man. And because the girl is a demi-human, and the man is a general of the Light Empire, everyone can easily deduce the devil's intention. Lucian, you must end. Amelia doesn't understand the situation, but she doesn't want to start fighting like that. Don't get into it, Lucian speaks in a neutral and steady tone, causing Amelia to be silent instinctively. Envy can't help laughing in Amelia's mind. Someone is really screwed. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me in read advanced chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.FI.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 236 Brainwashed woman you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Envy has no sympathy for the Light Empire generals, but she is not happy to see Amelia obeying Lucian that way. If you let him kill one of your pawns like that, the others may doubt your leadership. Envy talks to Amelia mentally. Do you think I don't understand that? Amelia replied sarcastically. Knowing that it will not be good for her act as the light envoy, she tried to talk to Lucian, but he told her not to get involved in this situation. It is easy for everyone to understand that one of the generals did something bad to the cat dot girl who was in Lucian's arms. Although Amelia also has no sympathy for Lucian's wives, she doesn't want to create problems by defending a shitty racist. So Lucian continued walking towards the generals behind Dawn, with a strange smile on his face. The generals don't know what to think. This is supposed to be a meeting between the leaders of the two armies and not to resolve personal matters. Dawn is surprised to see Amelia keeping silent and taking a step to the side. She is sure that Amelia would not let her people be intimidated, so she concludes that Amelia has everything under control. But actually, Amelia isn't thinking about doing anything and just let Lucian get closer to the generals. Dawn also took a step to the side as he appears to be over 1.9 meters tall, and his horns and wings are quite intimidating. The generals are the strongest and most courageous men of the Light Empire, after the king, of course. And together as a group, they become even braver. None of them would fear facing the brutal Manticore clan's patriarch. But there is something about Lucian that makes them uncomfortable. Perhaps it is his onyx horns that seem to shine, his blood.red wings with scary thorns, or the strange smile on his face. After seeing the light envoy and their marshal staying silent while stepping aside and giving free passage to the devil, the generals began to be concerned. Everyone understands that Madeline probably pointed to just one of them, and those who wanted to stay together realized that it is not really worth getting into it. As Madeline had pointed to the middle of the group, the generals who are at the side of the group started to step back. Still, as no one remembers Madeline, they all moved aside and back. Lucian increased the speed of his pace and arrived in front of one of the generals. The strong blonde haired man appears to be no more than forty. I don't know what you want from me, damn devil. The general declares boldly. But his body betrays him by moving slowly backward, making it clear that he is a little afraid. As the general moves slowly backward, Lucian also moves towards him. Do you really not remember that beautiful girl? The general looks disgusted. Why would I remember a damn demi-human? You are asking me to distinguish animals. For me, they are all the same. He stopped and stared at Lucian thinking he just wanted to intimidate him and wouldn't really do anything in this situation. Sigh. Lucian closes his eyes and then moves his head forward, hitting the general's forehead with his own forehead. For Lucian, that was a simple move. He used just a little of his force at medium speed. Bam crack but for everyone who is watching, Lucian's head became a blur as the general flew back several meters while his blood splashed everywhere. The general feels excruciating pain all over his body, 
especially in his head as he falls and rolls on the ground. Arf ha! He screams like never before as he feels the worst pain of his entire life. But the worst is not the pain. Although Lucian's attack just made a few cracks in his hard skull, the man feels like there are huge holes in his head. The general fears that, along with that dripping blood, his brain will also drain out from his head through the holes. Ay ay ay. Someone help me. I'm dying. The general cries in despair as he keeps his hands on his head. None of the other generals wants to get close to their friend, and they even move further away. Dot but Dawn tries to run to help the poor man. Still, Amelia quickly appears in front of her and holds her by the shoulders. You must not be involved in this. Amelia says with a concerned expression. She really feels that Dawn is her first friend, but she is not going to stop Lucian from killing her if it will cause her problems. Amelia's thought is the same as Lucian's. My family is important, the world does not really matter. The difference between them is that now, other people, not necessarily with the same blood as him, are part of Lucian's family. Dawn still tries to go towards the general who keeps screaming and crying on the ground. I have to help him. Please, light envoy, let me go. This is an issue between them, Amelia says without releasing Dawn. But, I do not understand what it is about. Then try to understand it. Despite the general's screams, everyone is listening to Amelia and Dawn's conversation. And Lucian understood Amelia's point. Lucian does not feel the need to give satisfaction to anyone outside his family. But he knows that his actions are being detrimental to Amelia's leadership as the light envoy, and that is definitely not fair to her right before their battle. Then he looks at Dawn while shaking his head. I read a lot about you in books. Also, I heard a lot of people talking and telling stories about how a brave and honorable warrior you are, and that you fight to defend your innocent people. He makes a confused expression, further confusing Dawn. But you are here defending a man like him. What did he do to you? Dawn asks. Lucian quickly responds. Nothing to me. He doesn't have the balls to attack someone with the same strength or stronger than him. But a few years ago, he attacked a group of young non. Combatant demi-humans who were leaving the Alliance to have a peaceful life in Port Green. No way. Dawn quickly denied that. Lucian continued to explain. He not only killed those young people, but he also had a lot of fun torturing them. Damn. They were just kids who didn't have good opportunities in their homeland and wanted to start their lives over again in another place. They wanted to get away from the Alliance so they didn't have to fight against your people. As the only marshal and princess of the Light Empire, Dawn always had a lot to do and a lot of people to lead. Because she was always busy fighting on the various frontiers of the Light Empire and also taking care of political issues, most of the time, she only saw her soldiers on the battlefield. And since that specific general had only recently been promoted from captain, she had only fought at his side a few times, not to mention knowing his past or personality. Still, Dawn couldn't believe that one of her generals would do something like that. After all, her people are not the villains here. The Light Empire only faces the Alliance's demi-humans because they are evil and want to destroy world peace. Well, that was what her father, the Light King, has been teaching her from her childhood. He told her how the demi-humans have been attacking their people since many years ago, and now it's their turn to attack back to defend the people of the Light Empire. While Dawn doesn't believe Lucian's words, the other generals look elsewhere. None of them can claim not to know what it's like to have fun torturing demi-humans as they all really like it. But of course, due to the strict discipline that Dawn leads them, and her personality, everyone understands that it's better for everyone that she does not know the kind of dirty things they like to do. While Dawn is confused, Amelia notices the other general's sorry expressions. With Envy's help, Amelia now finds it very easy to really understand people around her, and she already knows what kind of people they are. Of course, that kind of disgusting thing that Lucian is telling them, she didn't know and now, just like him, she is very angry with these men. 
Lucian realizes that Dawn is still not convinced and sees Amelia's sad look. So he tries again to explain the truth to Dawn because Amelia seems really to like her. He looks at Madeline. Please, tell them what that man told you, my dear. The general's suffering did not really bring a good feeling to Madeline, but knowing that Lucian will hurt anyone who hurts her like that, gives her a very good feeling of security because, of course, no one will want to harm her while fearing him so much. And being calmer now, Madeline speaks in a neutral tone. While torturing and killing my friends, he made me watch everything and then let me go after telling me he would feel great pleasure knowing that I will always have nightmares from not being able to forget everything he made me watch. No. A part of Dawn's heart starts to break while she sees the honest expression on Madeline's face. Madeline is clearly young now, so if that happened several years ago, she was really a kid when the general supposedly did all of those terrible things. And even if they weren't young, Dawn would still feel very sad because she is completely against torture and cruelty. Precisely because she doesn't like people like that, she fights against the Alliance's brutal and evil demi-humans. But if her soldiers are also cruel and evil, and she never realized that even though she is their leader, it means that she is a blind idiot and is actually the worst person among her people. While she feels so bad, a tear starts to come out of one of Dawn's eyes. She can't believe that she has been allowing such acts of cruelty for a long time without realizing it. The general who was rolling on the ground in pain is also hearing everything and yell. That is a lie. The other generals are very afraid that their secrets would be discovered, especially after seeing Amelia's severe look. So, on hearing their comrade trying to lie, they quickly try to, to save their asses. Yes, that is a lie. You can't believe him. Exactly, he is the devil. The devil is lying to weaken us. While Dawn finds Malian an honest and innocent girl, her generals no longer look like the brave and honorable men they once looked to be. Now they look just like desperate people trying not to suffer the wrath of that handsome devil. And about Lucian. Dawn can't help but admire some of his characteristics. Not his beauty, but his calmness in dealing with the situation even though it is evident to everyone that he very much wants to kill the general that did so much harm to his wife. Well, he as the devil himself may actually be lying, but Dawn doesn't think that's the case. He's so strong, incredible, intimidating. Even the light envoy took a step back to let him handle it. While Dawn's expression switches from sad to angry, Lucian realizes that perhaps she really is the brave and noble warrior of books and stories, and just doesn't know how dirty and wicked her soldiers are. Well, if she, as their leader, never noticed that they are just damn racists, she must be blind and stupid, or she never had a chance to see the truth because she was blinded by brainwashing. Anyway, Lucian doesn't want to be the kind of person who judges others without knowing them. But he doesn't mind judging this general who did so much harm to his cute Madeline. And his verdict is a brutal death. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me in read advanced chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.FI.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 237 A Minute in Hell You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Although it is evident to everyone that Dawn believes in Lucian's words, or at least part of them, and is disappointed not only with her generals but with herself, Lucian still wants to make everything clear. Lucian has no sympathy for Dawn, but he understands that Amelia likes her, so he should not kill her as he will do with all the damn racists of the Light Empire. He is lying. I have never seen this animal in my life. The general, who is still bleeding on the ground, can't help but keep trying to save his life. While hearing the general calling his cute Madeline an animal, Lucian becomes even more furious, but he tries to stay calm. In fact, since he knew about the effects of the bloody rose in his body, Lucian fears he is not in control of his own emotions. 
well, no one, even under any side effects, can really control all their emotions. But Lucian feels responsible for all his women, and for them to always be safe, he has to be perfect. All his actions have to be smart and well thought out, taking into consideration anything that can influence them. And after analyzing all this situation, Lucian concludes that it is time to punish that general, and as a bonus, open Dawn's eyes. Lucian walks over to the general and looks at him with a disgusted expression. Don't you get tired of this shitty performance? Everyone there understands what Lucian is talking about. All generals are people at the peak of the SS. rank, meaning they are very strong and robust people. Lucian's attack, although might, did not cause such a critical wound in the man's head, and he is just screaming with fear and because of the pain, which is undoubtedly intense. The general noticed Lucian in front of him and quickly starts to crawl backward. Go back, monster. Somebody, please help me. Get this devil away from me. Lucian starts to laugh. Are you going to start crawling now? It certainly suits a worm like you. The man uses all his strength to try to get up and run. But Lucian will not let him escape his wrath. Again, a part of Lucian's body turns into a blur as no one there can even follow with their eyes his ridiculous speed. This time is his leg. Crack Lucian stomps on the general's shin, smashing part of his grieve and breaking his bones, making a loud sound, followed by the general's agonized screams. <laughs> the man cries with all his lungs capability. While his screams are music to Lucian's ears, the other generals and even the troops more than 200 meters from them are sorry for the man. Meanwhile, Dawn doesn't really know what she is feeling. She is having the most influential crisis of her life while everything she believes turns in the same state as that general's shin, that is, completely ruined. But Amelia can't help smiling, as do Lucian's wives and troops. The soldiers of the Light Empire have already done too much harm in this world, and now, receiving Lucian's wrath is more than right. It is perfect. Madeline feels a little guilty because she is actually feeling good about this situation. But she doesn't feel good about that man's suffering, but because while Lucian is extremely kind and loving to her, he is actually a real devil to people like that general. And there is no way to be afraid when the person who creates the fear in everyone else is her kind husband. As the general screams and cries tears of blood on the ground, Lucian smiles sinisterly. Oh, look what happened to your leg. We have to do something about it. Creek a a h h s s s h i t t t. The man screams again until he is hoarse while Lucian smashes his other shin. Yes, now they are more symmetrical. Lucian mocks as he lifts the man by the collar of his plate armor. As Lucian raises the man's weak and injured body, his shins sway like a puppet's legs, totally out of his control. Despite the brutal scene, no one looks away from them. Lucian tries to make the general look in his eyes, but the man is too scared and tries to look around. But Lucian shakes his body, forcing him to look at him. Look at me, your piece of subhuman garbage. Look into the eyes of the husband of the innocent girl you dared to hurt. It wasn't me. Damn, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know her. You are wrong. The man cries and tries to create lies to save his life. Lucian sighs as he looks into the general's watery eyes. TSK. I will give you a chance to tell the truth now. Say it, and I will give you a quick death. Dot. The general is very confused without knowing what to do. His whole body hurts like hell, and part of him really wants to die just to stop this pain and not have to see Lucian's face anymore. Still, anyone like him, who has had a good life, full of pleasures and comforts, when facing death, fears it more than anything and clings to any chance of keep living. So, despite the general's mind wanting to say, yes, it was me. Now kill me quickly, it wasn't those words that his mouth spoke. It wasn't me. You have. The general tries to lie again, 
but before finishing his words, he finds himself flying backward as he hears more creak sounds inside his head after receiving another blow from Lucian's absurdly hard forehead. Ah. Uh, that must have hurt. Astrid can't help making a comment, which everyone hears. Roar Oya roar while seeing her master acting in a way so fascinating to her. Lucian shakes his head and looks at Dawn with a disappointed expression as he speaks to the general. I gave you a chance, but you fear death so much that you prefer to continue lying. Well, I will have to do you wish death more until you be willing to admit your mistakes. No, 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 please, no. The general tries to crawl using only his arms as his legs no longer work. But the man's screams fail to get any sympathy from Lucian as he walks towards the general again. Let's try something. Lucian takes the general by the arm with such a firm grip that his gauntlet is pressed, and his wrist is crushed, making more crack sounds. No, no, no. Aewa. The general begins to scream very loudly again, not just for the pain, but for the sinister smile on Lucian's diabolical face. While holding the general by the arm, Lucian tenderly smiles at Madeline. Then he flaps his wings. Whoosh, although Lucian does not use even half the strength of his wings in this movement, he creates a powerful wind wave that propels him into the sky and pushes people, even more than ten meters away from him, to back. While Lucian continues to flap his wings and go higher in the sky, the general screams as a hot and smelly liquid run down his broken legs. Lucian can't help but smile as L.U.S.T keeps her body materialized and holds tight to his waist. F.U.C.K. This is really cool. He laughs while L.U.S.T has fun together. Lucian wasn't quite sure of his flying ability, but if something goes wrong during the landing, he won't really get hurt as his resilience is already incredibly high being far beyond someone usual of the third layer of the mortal realm. Still, Lucian comments in a playful tone. This is no time for fun, my love. L.U.S.T continues to hold Lucian's waist tightly. So what are you doing with this man? I know you're having fun, so why can't I have fun too? Fair. Lucian can't help but laugh while teasing L.U.S.T. Well, I thought about we try something while flying together later. Is that what I think it is? L.U.S.T can't help but smile excitedly. Lucian smiles at her as he keeps the general away from her body. You are always thinking about it, my dear. L.U.S.T makes a lewd expression as she starts to press her brie A.S.T.S on Lucian's groin. The general would have been shocked to realize what kind of things Lucian and L.U.S.T are doing while he is torturing him but he passed out shortly after peeing himself. Of course, passed out, he can't suffer punishment, so Lucian lessened the force of his wing flaps, stabilizing his flight and maintaining a position in the air. L.U.S.T dematerialized her body so as not to disturb him. Lucian grips the general's other arm and starts to squeeze it slowly. When the steel of his gauntlet begins to deform and tear his skin, he wakes up in agonizing pain. Aya. The general wakes up screaming again, but Lucian shuts him down with a knee in his belly that makes part of his guts go to areas that they shouldn't inside the poor man's body. Then Lucian looks him in the eye. Let's make a deal. I'm going to let you fall, and if until you get to the ground, you yell at everyone the truth, I'll let you finish fall and die in peace. It doesn't seem like a tempt proposal. L.U.S.T can't help but joke in Lucian's mind. While Lucian laughs, the general starts to cry again. He can hardly imagine what it will be like to fall from that height, but undoubtedly it will look like hell. Then Lucian's expression becomes severe, scaring the general to his soul. But if you still want to keep this act of being a good innocent man, I won't let you hit the floor, so we can do it again and again. The general begins to choke on blood and tears. Please, 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 I beg you. Lucian sighs. Let's go, round one. No, no, no. Eh, eh, eh. The general starts screaming as he falls after Lucian releases him. 
Due to the high weight of his body added to the weight of his armor, the general falls like a heavy rock from the sky at a very high speed. His head is a mess as he feels a lot of pain in his broken members due to air pressure. He is unable to scream, cry, or even die. Although the sensation is traumatizing beyond anything imaginable, he soon sees the ground and a part of him prays that there really is a light god and that he can make his death painless and quick. And when the man reaches less than 10 meters from the ground, he closes his eyes as he is sure he is dead. But. Ha. Huh. The general stops in the air, with his head less than a meter from the ground, so a greater dread than what he has just felt fills his heart as he imagines what comes next. So, Lucian's charming voice makes some people laugh while others tremble with fear. I knew you would want another round. Lucian can't help but laugh, Harry because he managed to descend from the sky even faster than he made his way up, flapping his wings intensely and also stopping a few meters from the ground, which shows that he already has excellent control over his wings and flight ability. When he starts flying upwards, carrying the general again, the poor man realizes that death now looks very merciful. No, no, again, no. I'll say it. I want to confess, but please don't do anything else to me. The general starts screaming while crying. Oh. Why? I thought you liked that. Lucian continues mocking of the general, making his companions fear even his wicked sense of humor. The general screams with all the energy he has left. I did that. I really tortured those kids. They are demi-humans, so no one would judge me. I did that with a lot of others, and I lick. Crack before the general could speak further, which would be indifferent as everyone understands what kind of things he did, Lucian breaks his head off. In that minute, the general suffered a lot, really a lot, and Lucian does not really like prolonged torture. Neither his other women nor Madeline would want that. Lucian throws the general's head in front of Dawn. You brought your damn racist soldiers here for this. I suggest you go away or watch me and my girls massacre them all. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me in read advanced chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO fi.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 238 Not only this time you are listening at novelfull.audio. As the general's head rolls on the ground, Dawn panics. If her generals and her soldiers are like that. Maybe she doesn't really know her people. The light god would never tolerate such acts of cruelty, so if she, as the leader of those soldiers, is allowing them to be so wicked, the heavenly fury will come at them, and innocent people among her people can suffer the consequences as well. No. I cannot allow my people to suffer because of my soldiers' evil cations and my stupidness. Dawn begins to blame herself mentally. Dawn does not realize that while her mind is in a mess and her feelings are in chaos, she is staring at Lucian, and he is looking at her too. She starts to think out loud while staring at Lucian. You. You are the devil. If I kill you, I can fix that. Yes, the light god will certainly spare my people if I give him your head. Dawn forgets everything she saw Lucian do as is blinded by the hope that her people will not suffer the heaven punishment because of the transgressions of her soldiers. She runs towards Lucian with her fists raised in a very stupid way, ignoring the shiny sword is in her belt. Damned devil. It's all your fault. Dawn screams words that even she doesn't believe in. Dawn's movements are too slow for Lucian's super senses, but he doesn't move or react. He understands that she is just a desperate woman with a broken heart. Bam 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 bam, you. 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 Dawn begins to punch Lucian in the chest without realizing that she is not using even a small part of her great strength from someone in the first layer of the mortal realm. While the other generals fear Lucian's wrath, his wives can't help feeling pity for Dawn. 
Dawn starts to cry as she punches Lucian in the chest, why? What did I do wrong? Among everyone there, the person who is most feeling sorry for Dawn is Amelia. Amelia always knew that Dawn is deceiving herself with her father's false faith. Still, Amelia not only did not open Dawn's eyes but encouraged her blind faith. When Amelia arrived in this world, she could have clarified everything by saying that she was not the envoy that the Lie King claimed, but to achieve her own goals, Amelia manipulated Dawn even more, using her faith. Amelia is not hypocritical enough to say that she would do that differently if she could go back in time. She, like Lucian, will do anything for their family. But after spending so much time together, Amelia discovered that Dawn is a good and kind woman. Amelia still had doubts if she could really call Dawn a friend, and now, seeing her crying in despair and punching Lucian, Amelia realizes that she already considers Dawn to be her friend and can't help feeling sorry for being part of the reasons that broke her heart. Lucian doesn't know what to do as Dawn continues to cry and hit him. She is clearly hurting her hand more than his chest. He can't help wanting just to hug the poor and desperate woman even though she is the only one to blame for being so blind and stupid. But although his personality makes him feel sad for broken women like Dawn, he understands that she is the enemy of most of his wives, especially the demi.human. Also, Dawn's father killed the sage king, Cassidy's father. And that is the kind of thing that cannot be ignored. Lucian forces his arms not to hug Dawn. That would be really unfair to his beloved queen and the other girls. But before moving away from Dawn, Lucian looks at Amelia. Although they don't have a soul connection, it's quite easy for Lucian to realize that Amelia is very sad because of Dawn's situation. Lucian knows well what it is like not to have friends, after all, he and his sisters had the same childhood. Lucian feels very lucky to have met L.U.S. T and his other wives as they are his friends as well as his loved ones. He already thought that Amelia considers Dawn as a friend, but now he has confirmation of that, and he can't help but be happy and sad. Happy that his sister found a friend who is not a manipulative bitch like Envy, and sad that they are in this strange situation right now. Amelia doesn't know how to help Dawn right now. The truth will only hurt her more. And when confused, Amelia can only think of asking Lucian for help. Envy also notices Amelia's sadness and advises her mentally. Just look at his wife. They are always with smiles on their faces. If there is anyone who can help Dawn, it is Lucian. Amelia's expression changes from sad to pleading, shocking Lucian to the soul. The stubborn and crazy Amelia is so sad that she gives up all her pride to beg Lucian for help. Lucian feels like it becomes more and more difficult not to hug and comfort Dawn. The tears streaming down her face in pain appeal to all the empathy he has. He really wants not only to help the sorrow Dawn but also to help his sister keep the first friend she made in her life. If he wants to become stronger by cooperating with her, it is good that she is happy, and a true friend can help her adapt to his wives. Still, Lucian will not do anything harmful to his wives. That's why he looks at them, looking for their opinion about that. Dawn is really very famous. Perhaps the most famous woman on the West Continent. So everyone tells a lot of stories about her. And nobody has ever heard of her committing crimes or any act of cruelty. Indeed she is a warrior who has already killed many people, but always in fair battles against the Alliance's demi.humans who want to fight the Light Empire as well. Knowing that, Madeline has no negative feelings towards Dawn. Maybe she was afraid of her as many people, but now, all Madeline sees is a poor woman with a broken heart. A victim like her. Lucian looks at Madeline, asking her opinion, and she kindly smiles at him. Without the need for words, Lucian understands that Madeline is not against him helping Dawn. Then Lucian looks at his other wives, especially the demi.humans. Anne, Astrid, Scarlet, and the others, all of them nod at him because they understand that Dawn is not an evil person. Well, in addition to being understanding, Lucian's wives are also very smart, and everyone has the same concern. Getting along with Amelia. 
So, all of them can see that accepting that Lucian helps Dawn will not hurt them but will make them get Amelia's sympathy. Last but not least, Lucian looks at Angela and Cassidy. He cannot deny that despite the opinion of all his wives matter, he has greater respect for his queens, not for their royal title, but because they are wise and kind women who have a significant influence on other girls. Angela not only nods to Lucian but also talks to him mentally. She is just a victim of her own ignorance. All her people are like that, and probably her parents raised her that way. I don't think the girls are going to hold a grudge against her even if you bring her to our family. Lucian smiles as he answers her. You are very kind, my sweetheart. I won't always be able to act like that, but I think Dawn will be better as a friend than an enemy. Then he looks at Cassidy and quickly speaks to her. I will not do that if you are going to feel any, even the slightest discomfort with her, my dear. Cassidy honestly responds. I will not blame her for the mistakes of her soldiers or her father. I am not such a small woman. Lucian smiles at Cassidy. Of course, you are not like that, my love. You are my noble, brave, and fair queen. Still, no one will judge you for not wanting her in our house. Despite being excited to fight, Cassidy can't help wanting to jump off the floating platform and kiss Lucian. I really appreciate your consideration of my opinion, hubby. But it's really okay. Having all his wives accepted that, Lucian has no reason not to hug the desperate Dawn, who continues to cry and punch him. Dawn is totally out of control. She can't stop blaming herself for being so blind while trying to find a way to blame Lucian as well. But in the end, he has nothing to do with the Light Empire and its people. She doesn't even really know him. She starts to cry even more and tries to take a step back, but then she feels warm arms embrace her body. Ha! Huh. Dawn looks up with her face in tears and sees Lucian smiling tenderly at her. Dawn's first reaction is to try to get away from him. You. No. You are the devil. Lucian doesn't force Dawn against his body but gently keeps his hands on her waist. Yes, I am the devil. So. This. You are evil. I. N. Dawn is very confused. Her broken heart and her emotions out in control that prevents her from thinking clearly. Lucian smiles at her and uses one of his hands to wipe away the tears that keep coming out of Dawn's eyes like an infinite waterfall. Yes, I am evil. To everyone that means any danger for my loved ones. Still, you are not my enemy. I want to take care of you, Dawn. Dawn is very shocked to find out about this caring side of Lucian. He looks nothing like the brutal devil who just tortured that general. A small part of Dawn still wants to get away from Lucian out of fear, but she is very confused, sad, desperate for any emotional support. And Lucian's hug is so comfortable. His fingers are drying his tears so gently. He's so powerful, confident. In her entire life, Dawn has never received affection. Since she was a child, his father fills her with responsibilities. She has always worked very hard to keep her people happy and protected. All she did in this shitty life was to fight, fight, and fight. Only to find out that she was risking her life in battles for damn child torturers. But now, at that age, after discovering all that shit, someone is offering warm arms for her to cry in. Not just someone, but the devil himself. But is he really evil, even though he is the devil? Dawn couldn't help wondering as she reflects on everything she saw. She saw a poor demi-human girl who suffered so much in the hands of her light soldiers, looking at Lucian with confidence, knowing that he protects her from all evil. Dawn saw the light envoy herself give way to that devil to give what that damn general deserved. The more Dawn thinks about everything that is happening, the more she gets confused. Nothing else makes sense. Then she looks up again at the devil's handsome and gentle face. She sees Lucian smiling tenderly at her as he says in a very affectionate tone. Just let me take care of you, Dawn. Only now, just a little. 
Dawn's mind can no longer reason, but her mouth says what her heart's desire. Only this time. Just a little. Then Lucian hugs Dawn tightly, filling her heart with warmth and pushing away all the sad emotions she's feeling. She doesn't stop crying but starts to cry, even more, wetting Lucian's entire chest with her tears while hugging his waist tightly. Amelia smiles as she watches Lucian help her first friend. But she also can't help being jealous, which she tries to put aside, only this time. Just a little. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me in read advanced chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.FI.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing.